I had a dream the other night about how we only get one life. It woke me up right after two. <laughs> Okay, so the last video was uh, more focused on getting different perspectives. So I didn't want it to just be me and my perspective of what I thought Somalia was like. I wanted to hear about other people who were like me, who'd come from abroad and were either seeing Somalia for the first time or maybe second time, but they weren't raised here in Somalia. I just wanted to find out what was your experience? What do you think of Somalia? That kind of thing. So I could bring together as many different perspectives as possible. So that's what that video was about. And it was amazing. It was amazing hearing these, all those different stories. So that was that. So this video, the inspiration behind that, what I wanted to do for this video kind of came from my last video. As I was hearing about different people's stories, every day when I would go outside, I would meet either like local people or people who'd come from abroad. I just learned so many different stories. I, I heard um, so many different experiences and I couldn't get it all on tape, but I really wanted to dedicate at least one video to some of the inspirational people that I met. These are just ordinary people like you and me who are risking their lives by doing ordinary acts of bravery. That's what I'd like to call it. That's what these people do. It may not seem like much to them, but to someone like me, seeing how they live their lives and what it is they're doing, it's just, it's pretty inspirational. Like for example, at, oh, there was this guy I really wanted to interview, but I didn't have the time, but I had the pleasure of meeting. His name was Ahmed Village, and I went to an event one night, and I was speaking at that event, and so was he, and that's how I met him. And he's a man who came from London, he's a Somali man who had gone to London during the war. And he'd just come back recently because uh, he's a chef. He'd gone to school for it and everything. Then he came back here and he opened uh, some restaurants. I think it's like hotel and restaurant. It's called Village Hotel and Restaurants. And uh, he's a chef. He's not a human rights worker. He's not a community organizer or anything like that. He's just a man who loves to cook and he opened these restaurants. But his story is what's so inspirational and he basically came back to Somalia when it still wasn't considered really safe and he just opened his restaurants to show other people that you know um, in, in unsafe areas he just wanted to get people thinking if Ahmed Village can do this then I can do it too so it's, it's just a man who's a chef who is just trying to live his life in a way that inspires other people to live their lives too so, I don't know, I thought that was pretty amazing. So, because I didn't have enough time, I didn't get everybody that I wanted to get. But for this video, I did manage to get three people who I think are pretty amazing. So, the first person that you're going to see is called Nadifa Osman. And she is Minister of Public Works and Reconstruction of the Country. And I interviewed her because I really wanted to interview as many government officials as I could, but due to my time constraints, I, I wasn't able to, but I wanted to get at least one person. And I really wanted to know what it is that makes them do what they do. Why would you leave the comforts and the safety and the security of the country that you live in to come back to Somalia and risk your life day after day after day to be a part of a government of one of the world's most unstable countries. So I just wanted to hear why. Why do you do this? And I think I, pr I think her position is pretty cool. I mean, she's in charge of basically rebuilding Somalia. And besides all of them, all these government officials, uh, whether you agree with them or you don't agree with them, I think they are a part of uh, rebuilding our country. You know. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the government is perfect and the government's amazing and all that stuff, but the way I like to look at things is that two years ago, we didn't have a government. And the fact that now we have a government that we can criticize or complain about, I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So watch our interview next. 
مقعي هو نظيف محمد عثمان وحان أهي حلبان أبسين تام عائي منسر فابليك وقسي كونستركشن إلى غريب خلاص كأفراد الصور إفتي يا بقول لك الصور إفتي وحان سمي دكسي جد هاي وحان تقبع هاي برتمان عمر دكسي جسر وحان تقبع هاي حمر ومداك سارة وحان جامعة كبير أيام كتالجية وحان برتمان فقط بطريقة كتالجيناري كدي بوحان تيجي تلياني وحان سوي سمي مستر وطر كوميكيشن كا Somalia, Somalia. Wahai kita yang ada makhluk kesihatan ini sudah management di MBA untuk sendiri. Kita buang scholarship kehalai dah kau berusaha di naik nation CC. Wahai kita yang mereka kah di University of Sydney yang ambil sendiri master energy management dan policy. Iran tadi wah perisir ini wah jalan or ad or u masukul ahai, ina dat ke or destitute ke, ilmu ha minorities ke, oh u izin ada opportunity ina ansai ina awiyo, ano yang ik ah wah belajar ina ano kado kesukai volunteer, we Somalia wah makan or jamaat terbaik. وأنا أشتغل في المنطقة 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 وأنا أشتغل في Usually, I'm an engineer in Mopartano, being an engineer and being a man all the time. I was in the impact of the reality. I was in the impact of the reality. I was in the impact of the reality. I was in the impact of Again, film is a very rare female film. I was in the impact of Somalia itu semua ni, mereka orang itu je kita kau ini Somalia ni. Abah yang hangus sendiri nanti kerja raya, jadi abah yang kau ini. Laki ini tak abah yang lihat juga. Aku hanya arki opportunity badan Somalia kita tu, an an hangu asal di ina. Ida kita ni tu dia begini, ina involve tu nak usia tu Somalia ada persen di kerja, tu ni sedia sedia. Constituency, I can insult on ten. I need to work out for the Oxygen. So, even though I need a mark for the involved in Kuha or on election car observer, I had to make the election to Somali, the I am in an on the MGO international and all the Shakin. I was so much on our own. I had done it. خرس بتيجي على هذا ما جو تانكي وعيكة إنا اسمه عليه اللي اسبدله في قبل كرتا وحبات بيجول كرتا سامالي سكيوش كيرمان هسا وحي أن إيجيسي إنا كان سياسة سامالي حدا نروح في لا يروح في عن قول تعاون كرا أم موجودين كرا. كريم سامالي وحواي إنا أحب سامالي ونبت إيه. Somalia or Hormozia, and Regina, at the end of term, can politics can be done in a number of times. We add, we add, we add, it's with the way all the time, and we have to add the way to win the height in a number of times. Somalia, Melbourne, and Somalia, this was the way to win the number of minerals, and we have to have a strategic location to the graphical equipment. Somalia, do good and how we will. Let alone I need to order a new water tank. Marco, how would you do that? I see a light at the end of the tunnel. Somali in the book of Silicon Valley of Africa, a emu of Ali, with great ambition and hard work. General public, how would you say that? In an event, it's better to overnight in order to imagine. Somali in the football tactic. 
Bring those skills back to the commercial or Calibre back in the country because what they can not into see that by I know how the system do the system of a type and structure the sun success like Gary and so with Miss Gary. So, who has why not so important? What they can be busy upon and that's all what the goodies do. I am a battle, but it's the other brother also is survival is so good. Lakin so malas tu faham dah dapat bodoh kau ibu kau itu bahaya. So both of us itu bahaya. Lakin tim work kalau bahaya, masalahnya hampir kita sudah terhalang masalah itu fikir anda. Yang itu isu arkin kan dia semua ikan korbujuk korbujuk itu dah. Work asli korbujuk korbujuk. Lakin isu arkin itu tak wajib kalau kita kalau mayor. Rabaan ini beristiqomah ini makan orang di syarikat itu ilia. أركان برواقة آه هاي سلام بس أولويس أنا في سوماليا ده أنا وحنا في كيرنا وحنا جنب مكان أو هي بروح مكانا دول ده وحنا مكانته لكن بأركينه خاب كأنت إنه أو سو بوكسنت خاب كأنت إبر في إله وجودنا أنا كحالنا أنت كم مكان لي شيءنا وجو مروا سكسس حالنا جار ستيب باي ستيب لات أفضل ناجي هنا مركا إسكاشنا إسكربسنا أنقامة إسكربسنا ودن فيها لو بنتو Somalia is a great place to live. Uh, I'm proud to be Somali. Uh, Somalia has a lot of potential. Uh, no matter what we have been through, it's a common issue. All the world went through what we went through. So it's not something isolated from Somalia. And Somalia is coming out of its edges. Somalia is, is becoming a prosperous place. Uh, Somalia is a strategic location. Somalia has a lot of natural resources and minerals and uh, our people are very talented, entrepreneurial and we are working very hard to bring back the dignity and the prestige of Somali flag. Please uh, help us uh, fulfill our dreams in any way possible that you could contribute to the peaceful Somalia and Somalia that we all know. Thank you very much. So the next person, to give you a bit of a backstory, I learned about this girl when I was still abroad. Um, I read an article about her and uh, the article was about this girl who was 21 years old? Yeah, she's 21 years old, same age as me. And she was from Ottawa, Canada and it told a story about how she left Ottawa and she was in her second year of university, I think. And she left all of that to join the Somali National Army. And now, at the time of our interview, she is a lieutenant in the army. Ever since I read her story about how her and her sister left, I just thought they are amazing. She's my age and she's doing like, she's in the army. And it's not like she's in the army of a fully developed nation. It's an army in like one of the most war-torn countries in the entire c world so I don't know how she does it I don't know where she got the strength how she became so brave so um, ever since I read that article and I found out that I was going to Somalia I knew that I couldn't leave until I interviewed her and I found her I think I'm just gonna let her talk for herself now but just know that 
This, this girl is, she's amazing. <laughs> My name is Iman Ali Ahmed. Um, I'm a full lieutenant in the Somali National Army. My age is at, I'm 21 years old, and I'm currently living in Mogadishu. When my father was living here in Mogadishu, he had the first, you know, center for child service recruitment. And back in 1990, to fight against that, right? Yeah, a lot of uh, child service recruitment. And his main goal was to try to prevent a lot of these child soldiers from the And he opened centers, we have education centers for them, and got them to start teaching them mechanics, auto electricity, and carpentry things so they'd be able to, a profession for them to work rather than carrying a gun at such a young age. For some of the work that he was doing at the time, he was assassinated. And uh, that's when we, my family and I moved back to Canada. And I was being raised in Canada, a lot of it had to do with you know, being raised by, you know, a single mother and my two older sisters. We didn't have, you know, a boy in the family. Uh, we didn't have a boy in the family. And, you know, my mother raised me in a sense that uh, anything he can do, he can do better. And it really installed that into me. And what has driven me to come back to Mogadishu is the fact that my mother decided to come back and visit and see if the potential of reopening some of the rehabilitation centers. So she she was the one who really took the first step in coming back, and that was about five years ago. And at that time, it was, I mean, the situation was very bad, and her only way of keeping up was really just paying attention to the media. And there wasn't much that we could do. A lot of time. After my mother was here for about a year, uh, I decided to come visit her. And uh, I came uh, was about four years ago. And uh, she, she said she opened the first center and I started helping her with some of the work that she was doing. And a lot of it was around child soldiers. There was a lot of child soldier improvements and the United States soldiers and system, you know, the difficult position that they were in. And she was doing a lot of the work. This happened, and how can we try to respond to it? You know, how can we make this better? It frustrated me at the time because I wanted to avoid it from completely happening. You know, it shouldn't have, it shouldn't even get to this point. For me personally, you know, it's, my family was uh, was I'd say the least bit happy about my decision enjoying military and not just the military, you know, a lot of the response I was getting was, hey, well, you don't know much about your country, why don't you just join the Canadian forces, you know, that's what you raise, and you know, it's, in a lot, it's, in a lot, it's a lot more stable, you know, you're dealing here with no salary, you're dealing here with, you know, almost about, you know, 24 hours, you know, continuous fighting at the time, and you know, you don't know if you're even going to make it back to your home, and you know, a lot of, but I think, you know, for me, my family reaction initially, when I went to training, I called them, I was, while I was at the training course, and I said, well, I'm here, and, you know, and this is the decision that I made, and, you know, and for the first time, I felt as though, you know, I actually had some sort of, you know, it sounds silly, but like, you know, a purpose, because like, you know, being raised in Canada, I did I was always the type to not really, okay, what should I study, what, what should I major in, like, you know, okay, well, what are my friends doing, you know. It was just, I, I didn't know what I liked and what I didn't like, but I knew that, you know, when I came here, for the first time, the only decision that I ever felt was right was joining the military, and I, you know, it took me a while to sit down with my family and say, you know, I think that, and I'm, and I'm a big believer in that you will never, you know, you will never pass, you know, your time, you know, it, you know, I might, I might not be killed by a gunshot wound, but I might get killed by, you know, getting hit by a car. So for me, it was just, uh, it felt right, and I told my family that um, this is something that if, if you, if you really pressure me, you tell me I don't want you to do this, then I'm going to stop. But just know that this is something that I really want to do, and it's something that makes me happy. You know, and I feel like it's not just. 
fighting with Al Shabaab, but it was also the fact that I was changing the view in society in itself and the issue Somalia as a whole. You know, people were starting to respect. You know, it, it, it's it's not, a, and it, it's, it wouldn't be odd to see a female who's in in control of you know x amount of males. You know, and it wouldn't be it's not odd to see a female driving a car around town, or it's not it it wouldn't be odd anymore to you know for for a woman to be able to be in a powerful position where she can make decisions without consulting a male. So a lot of it, I think that it was. I had a bigger picture of exactly what I wanted to achieve. Seeing my family reaction you know, at the time, they thought, you know, people thought I was crazy. They thought, you know, I had the devil inside of me. At one point, I would wake up in the middle of the night where people would be reading the Quran on me, you know. But <laughs> eventually, you know, after several years, they finally come to just accept the fact that, you know, this is what makes me happy and this is my way of giving back. And I think a lot, of, a lot of what what has you know eased my mother is the fact that she's seen. It. People's reaction, you know, people would be like, you know, coming up to my mom saying, "Mashallah, like, you have a great daughter. I just can't believe she's doing this. I can't believe she's that brave to be doing this." And you know, and, and a lot of people, you know, tell me that, you know, you're you're similar to your father. You know, you're doing things that are, you know, beyond what's expected of you. And so, if and, and I think that's what really has eased her now. And she's come to say, you know, if this makes you happy, then you do it. But, uh, and I don't think you can find that very often where parents will be able to really accept you know, their child and you know, allow them to make decisions in which you know might not be, have the best outcome. But I believe that uh, you know, you're, you're not going to pass your time and that you know, anything that God has planned for me or is going to happen either way. And, so, and this is something that I feel that you know, as long as I... As the day I start you know, not liking, or today they start, you know, not feeling that I don't want to do this anymore, then that, you know, that'll be different. But as, as of now, it's something that uh, I really, truly enjoy. And for the first time, I feel like I'm making an impact. And I'm not just really just helping one or two two people, you know. It, 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 I feel like for the first time, I'm helping a lot of people. You know, I'm changing people's views, their mentality. The most hardest thing to do, you, know, you can give somebody money and, you know, help them get on with their day. But changing somebody's, you know, having them a different view of their mentality. You know, you're not, you know, I dealt with a lot of things that, you know, maybe another female who decides to join the military won't have to do now because it won't be so odd for her to just join the military. You know? um, what I would tell them is don't believe everything you see in the media. Somalia is not the way people are, you know, projecting it. It's not. You know, they have this, this idea that Somalia is like, you know, a war torn country and has no, like, hope in redevelopment because I think that, you know, Somalia was still, you know, I think the civilians and, you know, a lot of diasporas and a lot of locals are still wanting that peace and, you know, and we are still working and we're all fighting for the same goal. So, for me personally, it's, um, and I think that a lot of people we have back in diaspora, you know, we have, college graduate, we have university graduate, we have people working professions, we have people who are just sitting around, you know, some of these like, you know, Western countries and doing nothing with, you know, some of the potential that they have. And I think that I would really recommend for more people to come back and do something for this country. Because then at the end of the day, this is your country, and, you know, and and you owe it to your country to do something for it, you know, and you know, you've been given that opportunity to leave Somalia and you know study abroad, then I think it's you should be able to come back. You should be able to come back to Mogadishu or Somalia or wherever part you know you wish, and give give that opportunity you were given to some of the other locals. I've met some diasporas who who have come back to Mogadishu and who aren't really doing much, but they're doing half an hour a day teaching English. You know, and to some of them, it, that, that, that's that's a lot because you know you're writing that opportunity, you're giving them a wider knowledge, education, and I think people need to start acknowledging that you know this is this is your country, and, and you know you owe it back to your country to do something for it. it doesn't matter what you do. Everyone has an impact. You just being here today is making an impact because it's showing you know the locals of Canada, you know that you are you still have hope for Somalia, and that you haven't given up. We have so many opportunities. We're talking about jobs. We have job opportunities. We're talking about financial. We have income here in this country, but it just needs to have those generated. So my only 
closing words would be that um, not to believe everything that you see in the media and to not neglect the country that I am, to come back and do something for your country. Even if it's something small, then, you know, rather than going to have to send that little money, it's easier just to come here and just be present here because that makes a big difference. Anyone can give back in their own way. I'm not telling you to be a soldier, but come here and make that little bit of change. The final person whose interview I'm showing you today, he's an ordinary person. Again, I told you, all ordinary people like you and me, and he basically came from Doha, Qatar. He's an engineer, and he came to Somalia because he wanted to be a part of the rebuilding process. And what happened was, while he was on a trip around the city with guards, and men who come from India, they were engineers as well, and they were working on a project um, to create a map of how to rebuild Mogadishu, basically. And they were on a trip to go around the city to go find out what needs to be done and all that, and they ended up getting attacked by Shabab, and they were hit by a roadside bomb, and the sky is pretty amazing. If it were me personally and I got hit by a bomb, I think I'd be scared out of my pants and I would not be reacting the way this man reacted. So it's my pleasure and it's my honor to have gotten the opportunity to interview him. And his response to what happened to him makes him a pretty inspirational person in my book. So here you go. My decision in Somalia was to be a doctor in Ismaha Construction and Engineering. It was my hobby a long time ago in Somalia to be a doctor in Somalia. For example, I am a professional civil engineer in Morocco, South Africa, South Africa, and South Africa. Dohan was a shape. So what kind of experience that I gained during all this time in terms of Somalia? How the well is in Halab or construction in Somalia? The reconstruction is coming back. There's no quality control system like there. There's no planning system. There's no all this stuff. So what kind of? I mean, at least so, but or I would be in terms of my experience. And the other thing too. أنا لسه أتي سومالي هذا كل قصة تاريخ قصة فاسة سومر كان كلا خلايا دوت أو سومالي جنيرة الجوعان ودنك أنت سكرت هذا الوقت لا سسحب الله بس أو بلان مرصد أربي بلاني so that هذا الوقت أنت مودك إسكت جبين أو بهار بحيث all this stuff مرك أرمى كلا عرب أو أد أو حبي أو أو personal interest كيا أنت سومالي فعوا حكمي ده أنت أصول بودك لاسو بحلا construction standards أو بودك أو construction standards أو مشقة أو Standard regulation. I don't care. Oh, what law is that? Is it something that law is so? So much of what I have is a matter that it is too hard. And that what drives me to come back home to help the country be part of the rebuilding process. In my experience, having so many interviews, a lot of them, you know, mark a book or or isma ha mark an or project yash or or kala shatay, especially book to fund yash engineer yash. You know, most of them they just they 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 have the skills like they need the about the international experience with any new hacking or quality control system that we have and so forth. But the only thing that makes me happy, but I'm so mad at you how I'm wrong. Of so mad, I'm so shy. I'm so worried. I'm so anxious. I'm so scared. I'm so anxious. You know, exchange ideas. We have the good that we have. We have to come with it. And for example, I'm so mad. I'm so loud. I'm so loud. I'm so loud. Look, I'm gonna have to learn. You know, they talk about so mad. Save me in the media. I'm not gonna care. 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 I'm not gonna care
so that so that I can feel the pain of the or somali or the Gokara Kuba that don't have a bank the, the, the luxury to go to another country or the passport to go to another country. So much I wanted to feel their experience, you know, what, what is it about, how is it? So I decided to stay and need to go about the last two weeks or two weeks ago. Uh, I never felt, oh, you know, I wanted to uh, come up, go back to where you are, to Doha. But like, I decided to stay. And the other thing too, I don't know who did it, but I think from my side, market, I forgive them. But because the uh, Kerala Somali, you have to learn how to forgive each other. Because I wanted to Wuhan, something to go Like, I don't have no hard feeling for because we have to teach each other and we have to learn from each other how to love each other and how to forgive us. So this and that will motivate me to come back at the, I'm coming back from the show. I'm planning to have my own construction company and I'm looking at the at least transfer experience and yeah, transfer to the, the technology and the knowledge that I gained during my work experience. I'm currently back uh, at the European Geographic of Conference. I'm going back to the show. I'm going to show you how to do because I want to be part of our, uh, the uh, rebuilding process of Somalia. And I want to have a lot of people who are not going to be able to do this. I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, in our you know, we have the power the most of the time. We can so much that the uh, people have a of unity person. You know, it bothers me a lot. And it, a person interested in the at least unity for them. Whatever, whatever it is that we can get it, maybe like a lot of people who are in Somalia, the number of the people can afford the unity in Iran is 10% you know, of, of the population. So I'm thinking about a solution, what can we do to help the poor or who cannot afford clean water. I had a lot of people who 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 had a lot of people yeah, this is something that, I, that I'm interested in. The other thing too, I'm interested in how I'm building about the healthy houses, about the environmental friendly houses. And the other thing is that I'm interested in how I can see the buildings, how they're doing wind, and there's no air ventilation, but just because we're doing the glacial air also. So I wanted to have awareness in terms of the smart car for a lot of stuff. You see the Google logo, so how can we build a house that has a bar, had big windows, big doors, uh, or, bar, or air ventilation that, that you can save the, even the energy? Because Google so this is the project that I'm interested in. The construction of the that we can do a lot of stuff. Or that environmental friendly, that low cost at the same time that environmental friendly. That was dark. So all in all, I really hope you enjoyed watching and hearing these people's stories as much as I uh, felt honored to be able to interview them. Like I said, ordinary people doing ordinary acts of bravery every single day. And it just makes you think about your life and the way you're living your life. They make you aspire to live a life that's more oriented towards your community and bettering the life of others. So yeah, I just hope this video got you to reflect on what you're doing with your life. Because hearing these people, it really got me to reflect on mine. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Okay, just say something to me. Thank you.